Hello and welcome to the Robin Sealark channel. Today we are going to be talking about the do's and don'ts of realistic mouth painting. This is part of a series I haven't touched in three years, but the videos are great. If you would like to learn more about eyes, nose, skin tone painting, it will be linked in at my end screen, but uh, for now, I hope you, you enjoy some mouth painting skills. Follow my social media, make sure you're subscribed, check out my uh, Twitter linked in my description for resources from this video so that you can follow along in the tutorial if you'd like to do so. And see you after this. <laughs> Hello folks and welcome to today's very special do's and don'ts. Now oftentimes when I am making pieces I actually don't do the drawing portion. I'm much more of a painter and I like doing what's called transfer drawings. We'll go into that process a little bit later. But I wanted to go through some of the structural elements of these lips and do some warm-up exercises. Try drawing them free-handed so that you could get a better idea of the actual structure of lips. Cause when I approach a lip, I wanna think of it in terms of its meaty pads and it has a few of them. And by defining those meaty pad areas, we're able to create much more accurate lines. Instead of having a flat middle of our mouth, we might respond to some of the plumpiness on either side of that bottom lip. Or maybe we'll have a little dip in the middle because of where our lip goes down below our cupid bow. But in each of these I did basic drawing techniques. I would create a midline going vertically and going horizontally. Sometimes I would draw in the actual shapes of the teeth, but when I actually went into the painting portion I did my transfer drawings, which you can see look quite a bit different. Before we go into that, I want to talk about our don't side of things. So on this, I'm going to be making lips. I still have my midlines, but I'm taking away a lot of understanding of the actual structure to the lip. I'm not thinking about where those meaty pads are. I'm creating very straight angular lines and in those teeth, you can see they're very grid-like. Along with this, another very beginner mistake is to use straight from the tube paint. And while this video isn't going to go into creating flesh tones, I do have a do's and don'ts on skin painting you can watch. I do want to point out that a frequent mistake is just making these very peachy, minimally mixed colors. And going straight in for our highlights and shadows, the highest and darkest points of our painting with pure black and white. Because while our teeth are white, while our lips are red, they sure ain't straight from the tube, red and white. So we're gonna go into how to mix things and give them a lot more dimension. I had to get some reference photos that are going to be available, as I said on Twitter. There'll also be opportunities for you to screenshot them. But here's where we're going into our do sides. I wanted to have a base on these that was similar to color of my skin, since I am our model. And at this point is where I'm gonna show you the transfer drawing. On the back side of all of these tracings, I'm rubbing them with new pastel, hard chalk pastel. You can also use charcoal. And then I'm placing them new pastel side down onto my surface and simply tracing over the lines. You can use a light brushing to get rid of some of the excess powder, spray it with a fixative or hairspray to adhere the lines. Make sure you're getting things drawn on how you desire. And then you're going to have a really solid foundational base if you do so choose to uh, work off of a transfer drawing. Because I did six different mouths for our do sides, I decided to do some of the paintings side by side so you could get a little bit more an idea of a variety of mouths, some with teeth, some making more strange shapes, but all working with the same basic premises so you can reinforce this structural knowledge. On these ones, I wanted to go for more simple mouths, more commonplace expressions that you would see. So my main focuses were in creating softness, realistic color, depth, shading, structure. On these I only used a very limited palette and I worked entirely in acrylic. There was black, white, red, blue, and I did have some off tones. There was a burnt umber and also kind of a brick red. But the main thing you want to know while working with these things is that you don't want to mix straight up red and white to get all of your pink tones or else you're gonna have a very kind of pig-like 
face and lips. There's a lot more dimension and browns and maroons than you might realize. Going in directly with black, while I don't think that rule is entirely necessary to never do that, I would suggest against it because I found in the areas that I did use too much black in here, I was flattening very greatly my images and losing some of the color vibrancy that I wanted. In fact, in the end, as I developed these paintings, I would put down more simple and concrete tones and then I would move back on top of it after the layers dried with very thinned out, watered down paints so that I could intensify some of the warmth and flesh tones that were in there and get rid of some of the flattening that I had created. Now for these two we have somewhat weirder expressions. I went with two teeth born sites. I did use a little bit of black on the right image to get my deepest shadow. This is okay if you're just blocking things in the beginning, but remember that you're going to want to try to make those colors a little bit more complex. Push yourself, see if you can read into your reference images and pull colors that might be a little less expected than what your brain is assuming. Since we are working on teeth for this, I want to point out a serious do and don't because in our don't side you saw that I went straight for the teeth with pure white. You want to save your tonal best for last. That's a phrase I just got recently from Andrew Tischler, another artist who produces YouTube videos and paintings um, all over the place. If you're going to be making your teeth, you don't want to take the shine, that brightest white that is going to give you the idea that you are in a wet, uh, moist space. That's what is lending to, uh, you know, the mouthy quality of this. So you want to make sure that going into your teeth, you're thinking about giving them different shading, making the crevices a little bit defined by adding some kind of discoloration, darkening as you get to those cracks between the teeth, and then doing mixtures with your paint. Maybe your teeth have have white with just a little bit of blue or brown mixed into them so that you can have some dampened color and then when you want to put on those highlights that's when you can shove your pure bright white or in this case I was using an antique white color. These were really cheap acrylics. Some of them are a little bit nicer. I was working with some Liquitex paints that are nice, as well as Apple Barrel brand, which is the cheapest brand you can get pretty much in the States. It's at our Walmarts and they're like 50 cents to a dollar each. But because I'm working so small, I don't have to worry about having super pigmented paint and I can layer things up more quickly. And it's honestly kind of nice to work in thinner layers sometimes because you can build up your colors in interesting ways, glaze on top, develop them in a more processed way. So these two I wanted to mostly talk about your lips and the directional pull of how you are applying your paint. So for each of these I did a bit more short stroking and thinned out diluted paint using water. You could also use an acrylic medium to make your paint a little bit more translucent. But when I was working on the lips or in certain areas, I was trying to be conscientious about pulling the strokes of my brush to accentuate the way that your lips wrinkle. And then the light catches on those different lines and wrinkles, creating a shine. So when you work with paint that is kind of watered down, as it dries, it'll get a little bit more translucent even than when you first apply it. But then afterwards, you can go on top and make sure you're really developing depth and shaping out the lips. You want to have very soft edges and anything that's going to be realistic because unlike our don't side, these lips blend nicely into the skin. We did six for the do side, a lot of variety, all of which will have reference photos available for you to screenshot. From earlier in this video or you can check out my Twitter. There will also be the line drawings from the actual tracings that I made available if you do want to see how detailed I get with my drawings and use those for your transfers. Thanks and good luck! Oh, well that's that. Uh, do you guys have anything you would like to see? Would you like more videos in this series? If so, what? <laughs> if you would like to buy any of these paintings, they will be available on my website at robinsealark.com. You can also follow me on social media to support at Robin Sealark or uh, join my Patreon. That would be cool too. Um, have a nice, have a nice week and uh, make some, make some mouths. Tag me uh, in some mouths. Uh, <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>